Welcome everyone to our presentation of self AP, self supervised entity alignment in knowledge graph. I'm Zhao. Hi, I'm Colleen. Today, we're going to introduce you an algorithm for aligning knowledge graph entities without any labels, which is done earlier in the past. Before we dive into the details, let us first share with you a story about our well known friends, Tom and Jerry. They also planned a visit to our web conference, and something really amazing happened to the visit. So, what has happened? Upon their inquiry, the poster said, Wow, it's crowded and noisy. Uh -huh. That was called a vendor did this year. But anyway, Tom still gets separated from Jerry and lost in the crowd. Jerry and one of our Tom in a crowd of visitors. Colleen, can you figure out how can we help them? Well, it is a funny Tom problem. It's quite similar to any alignment problem in all it was. Maybe we can design an alignment algorithm to help them. Yes. The few people are the entities we want to align. And the crowd of people along the Tom are the next example. Can we use entity alignment as well to help them? Well, the common practice is similar to the supervised entity alignment. Jerry could just use call to call us and ask people to play as the policy player in the alignment. Jerry can say, Hey, Tom, I'm at the door, and Tom can come to the computer. So, I have a question. What if they don't have fun? I mean, it's a little bit of a So, this problem can be an unsupervised alignment problem. That is, no one has that it before. Ha ha, you're right. If they are without fault, Jerry and Tom can't get closer. But luckily, at the moment, they meet a senior researcher so far, and he tells Jerry, you can try the idea of relativity. What is relativity? Jerry suddenly understands that if Tom can't get closer, Jerry can somehow push other people away as far as possible. Then Jerry magically produces a big fan and a strong wind can blow other villages away. In that case, he can make Tom relatively closer to him. This is an idea, but can this idea of relativity? Be applied to entity alignment. Well, actually, okay, uh, certainly, given the popular entity law in entity alignment, it can be decomposed into the alignment and the uniformity term. Up from this, we noted an interesting phenomenon we need to pre trained word documentation in entity alignment. No matter it is the fact technique that is. Find the first for our ESP we use in our work. The power for pretending many can satisfy that while positive pairs X and Y, their normalized inner product is usually as large as one. With an additional shared encoder app across both species, in practice, we discover that for many X and Y, their corresponding FX and FY inner product is still very large. And that's our first insight. And in that case, if we name the original entity law as the absolute inverse measure, which is absolutely putting X and Y closer to the exact state, given the condition we have just mentioned, it will be approximately equal to what on the Y, that namely the relative inverse measure. Why is it called relative? Well, that's because. Now in the law, we surprisingly find that it has nothing to do with the positive y, but only the negative y minus. The law term does not absolutely pull the positive further, but will focus more on pushing away the negative, which is also the case in the late state training of the right energy line, where the positive heads have been fully optimized. This leads to our second insight. That negative samples may matter more in our entity alignment. And theoretically speaking, on top of the theorism proposed by one in 2021 for ASM, 
we propose a proposition which proves that our relative similarity method is a constant temporal and upper bound of ASM. In another word, when we optimize the RSM, we are approximately optimizing the ASM too. Wow, the idea of the activity is cool. So, wait a minute. If you have a good idea of our comments, how many accidentally blow away external? They just can't make it without the position. Oh, yes. That's the near fault. And then it's called the threat of collision in energy alignment, in which our positive fly is mistakenly thankful as the negative. When the number of negative flows larger, the collision probability becomes unimportant. Our experiment also demonstrates that such negative collisions can cause a significant drop compared to those without collisions. So relax. Something amazing just happens at the moment. Um, it is not done with this though, but the part is so awful that as a result, the crowd spreads out to you. Oh, um, in that case, why is it easy to find the top? You should set up the dining room door. Heavenly, yes. This part also inspires us to explore a new kind of negative sensor strategy in self teaching To avoid the problem of collision, we present the self negative sensor strategy. While traditional label aware counterpart samples the negative from the counter noise graph, we present the sample negative from the ego noise graph. From a geometric perspective, this equivalently pushes negative away from the policy pair, which closely locates each other in the exam space. Its superiority lies in avoiding the collision. In fact, we also present an important theory showing the effectiveness of self-negative sampling that it can be approximately equal to label aware counterpart sampling when KT satisfies the following condition. First, KT shares a similar distribution which can be ensured by using the pre-trained word structure here. And second, the number of negatives is sufficiently large. And to summarize the story of theory and harm, in this story, we discuss two unique ideas to help them to union without winning their goal. The first is the idea of relativity, in which we show that negative samples may matter more in current energy alignment part. The second is the self negative sample, in which we illustrate that the threat of collision must be avoided. And on top of the two ideas, we build our self pity algorithm. And our careful algorithm may notice that for both our proposition and theorism, they emphasize the importance of the number of negatives. And yet, we find that with more negative samples, the better performance and aligned algorithm will be. We also examine the theoretical discovery in our empirical study and show its correctness. The performance does grow not routinely with the number of our negatives. And in previous literature, very few negative samples are employed in the chain and usually as few as around 10. Self KG significantly outnumbers them by using over 4,000 negatives per time. So, how does that get to be a to improve the performance? Look how our computation agency is improving so many methods. Wow, that's really a problem. But with that, to solve the efficiency challenge, we enlarge the number of negative samples via the negative two strategy adopted by most which takes the latest and important factors as the negative. For example, for the case batch, it used previous important factors as its negative, and after computation the law, they put itself into the queue. And for the next batch, it continues to do the case batch and all the previous ones as its negative, and finally put itself into the queue. Such strategy does not require any additional encoding effort and thus has a comparable tendency to those with fewer negatives. 
and with the help of multiple negative tools for each case respectively, our subspecies is jointly optimized over all of cases. It requires no labels at all, and in our implementation, it only involves the entity name and the first of the label. Will such a simple self supervised algorithm achieve good results? Well, next, that will come to introduce our surprisingly well experimental discovery. Hi everyone, there are two highlights in our experiment. First, one can see the other one of the other. So, if you can see the first thing, could you please come closer? To we have some problems now. Could you please close up to the micro? Okay, thank you. Second, compared to this device method, we have a no labels at all. So maybe we can be competitive to existing state of the art. We experiment on the widely acknowledged benchmark data set. We got the one with the tag and we use the tag. We use it as one integer following quite a work. The blue bars are a series of supervised phase one, collaborating with one hundred percent of labels. While the minor pink is previous unsupervised state of the art, and the doctor pink to present self-PG, both of which use no labels at all. On those data sets, self-PG is way better than state of the art on the part method. Meanwhile, compared to 13 to the last phase one, on mono data sets, and 23 to the last phase one, on multiple data sets, self-PG can be a majority of them to the match the state of the art to the last counterpart. To sum up, the last figure illustrates that on the monolithic data set of the W1100K, self-PG is nearly 100% correct. The right figure shows that on the more challenging multilingual data set we use in 16K, self-PG is still competitive to supervise counterparts. Besides, self-PG consistently includes different words and data. This provides a survey of the LABM data that is used and with the fact that the data is widely adopted to try to work. We can see from the figures that LABSD, a bad in writing, performs better than that test after training with our method. So for each of them, self PG training makes improvements consistently. To sum up, initial indirect mining values to self PG, but self PG can consistently help regardless of the intent. Now we talk about our PG in low data resources. We extend our PG to a supervised value using absolute similarity matrix mentioned before, which leverages the provision from three steps. The horizontal aspect represents the ratio of labeled entities used by the supervised value, and the vertical aspect represents the performance. Self PG is a self supervised method irrelevant to label information. So the line representing its performance is horizontal. The figure shows that when the ratio of labels is less than 100 percent, which is the size of original data class word of training labels, the self supervised self PG performs way better than the supervised value, which illustrates that self PG works very well in the low data resource setting. Okay, friends, here's the takeaway. Our work focuses on the question how to get rid of the use of supervision in anti alignment. We propose two key ideas. The idea of creativity and self master company, as mentioned before. Our method, self PG, a self supervised method using no label information, can greatly improve the performance for the unsupervised based one. And it's obviously competitive to supervise on the box. Finally, our code, data, and the blog are here. We'll come to use the QR code for the link to produce and explore our work. We hope this is the self supervised moment of ethnic alignment community. That's all. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much for this animated uh, presentation. Uh, any question from the audience? No? No questions. No questions? No? I, I have one. 
Uh, there, there is a work that published in Sigma 2021 called the uh, autophasy join. That's relevant. The idea is the same to to make entity alignment with a bit uh, unsupervised entity alignment. Are you aware with this work, autophasy join? No. Okay. I cannot understand very well. There's a problem with your connection, I think. Do, do you repeat, please? Okay, Thank you. 